Okay. We'd like to get started. I wanted to let you know that the bookstore will be open until after the next break, but it won't be around when you leave. So if you need to buy anything, you'll need to do it in the next break time. A couple of books, again, I want to let you be aware of. The Moody Handbook of Preaching, and that is uh, by John Kostler. And then the Moody Handbook of Theology, uh, edited by Paul Enns. So this is another good book to have on hand. Dr. Neely will be coming forward now to give his second message on preaching, the moving power of story. Please come. Thank you. She was an actress, dancer, and a poet. She was graced with a rare and resonant vocal instrument that comes on the scene once every 50 years. Shortly after her death, a journalist wrote an article about her celebrating her life and her achievements. But it was these words about her that riveted me. Above all, she was a storyteller. This was the journalist's capstone description of the late Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou was a masterful storyteller. In her telling memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, she poured the content of her remembrances into the form and shape of a powerful, memorable, an eloquent story. She understood stories' mysterious power to penetrate the hearts and minds of people. She understood that naked truth dressed up in plot, character, setting, and dialogue has the ability to walk through the protective walls of a person's inner world and shape them teach them, sustain them, inspire them, put survival strength in them, and give birth to hope and dreams within them. This insight is old as Nathan the prophet. When charged by YHWH to confront King David about his sins of sexual abuse in murder, Nathan does not confront the king directly. Instead, he told David a story, a story that penetrated David's heart before his defenses could go up. Wisely, Nathan allowed the story to do its work before he directly confronted David and declared to him, you are the man. Through this means, David is confronted, corrected, brought to confession and is forgiven. 2 Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 through 7 is a great example of the redemptive power of story. At this point, it may be wise for me to clarify what I mean by story. A story is not merely a recounting of events in temporal sequence. For example, the king died and then the queen died is a recounting of an event, but it is not a story. The king died, and then the king died, uh, the king died, and then the queen died of grief is a story because the time sequence is preserved 
and the causal link between the clauses gives the chronological sequence a plot. All stories have plot, but the plot shape will vary from story to story and will not necessarily involve the resolution of tension. The book of Jonah is a case in point. The book ends without the tension being resolved. Still, irrespective of a story's compositional patterns, plot understood as the meaningful and causal sequence of events is a defining feature of all stories. Story is powerful, and it is naive to disparage and downplay story as a force for good or evil. In fact, I have the distinct impression that God has wired people for story. Story has mystique and drawing power that touches people at profound psychological, emotional, imaginative, and spiritual places. Several years ago, I was one of the speakers at a pastor's conference on the island of St. Vincent in the Caribbean. We had just finished lunch. It was hot. Frankly, I felt like taking a good afternoon nap, but we had another session, and I dreaded the fact that I would be subjected to a sermon right after lunch in the sweltering heat. There was no air conditioning in the, room, in the room where we were meeting. The courageous preacher started and droned on for what seemed like an eternity. I fought with all of my might to keep drowsiness and sleep at bay. Then the sermon went into cardiac arrest and flatline. We tried the shock to sermon back to life with the defibrillator of amen. <laughs> Say it, brother, and preach it to no avail. <laughs> the only course of action left was to call it, pronounce the sermon dead and issue a homiletical death certificate. Then all of a sudden, there was a sermonic heartbeat. The preacher started telling a story, and to my utter surprise and amazement, my, drowsin my drowsiness lifted like fog. It seems as if the sun came out. The homiletical sky was blue. As a teacher of preachers, I had a big question. What happened? What is it about story that has the kind of power to impact me at the level of my biochemistry? causing my drowsiness to dissipate. I believe that God has wired us for story. Since the dawn of human history, story has been the primary means of shaping upcoming generations, internalized principles and values. <clears throat> distinguished heroes from heroines, uh, distinguished heroes and heroines from villains and culprits cultivate sentiments of satisfaction when good wins and sentiments of disgust when evil seems to triumph. Story was the primary means of passing on to the next generation ideological, theological, and cultural legacies. As I reflect on my own life, it was when my mother told me biblical stories that the fear of God was inculcated in me. And this internal shaping continued as we sat in a circle around our Sunday school teacher who told us the old, old story of Jesus and his love. But there was another storytelling medium that shaped my life, the comic books. During the middle 60s, I devoured the DC and Marvel comic books. 
my reading of the stories of the Avengers, the Black Panther, the Fantastic Four, the Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man, Superman, and Wonder Woman reinforced the values of right and wrong that I learned at home before I knew anything about the molding power of story, the comic book tales with the pictures, the dialogue, and scenes demarcated with boxes shaped the contours of my cognitive and effective worldview and deeply impacted my imagination before I had the academic competencies to realize what was happening. Today, story is the driving and shaping force of the world in an unprecedented manner. 21st century was born in the throes of an information technology explosion. 24-hour news cycles, the emergence of social media platforms, through the technological means that I was disposed to today, we received stories from every corner of the globe and with the click, send stories to the remotest part of the earth, shaping opinions, making some people uh, glad and others mad, fueling revolutions and toppling governments. Indeed, technology facilitates the telling of stories, stories that in all likelihood a good number of people would not have heard in the preceding generations of human history. For example, I read uh, in the February 26, 2018 edition of Time Magazine a short piece entitled um, A Hashtag Me Too Movement for Muslim Women. The journalist writes, using the hashtag uh, Mosque Me Too, Muslim women have begun to speak up online about sexual abuse experienced while on the Hajj the annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca and in other religious spaces like mosque. Um, uh, the spark, an unidentified